Greetings to you. My name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 115. Sock. I'm not joking. Sock. Now this <laughs> vlog comes by request from our Quality Assurance Officer in the Office of Graduate Research, my sister from another mister, the wonderful Karen Jacobs. And Karen went to a conference and saw a presentation on sock and asked if I would translate it for an Australian experience, but also from a Flinders perspective. So what is SOC? <laughs> SOC is a significant original contribution to knowledge. Now I'm thrilled to do this vlog. It's really interesting and it is a really nuggety issue. Now I'm perhaps going to deliver the vlog today, the vlog that perhaps Karen didn't want, but I found it quite intellectually interesting to be a part of what could be a very significant, intriguing and maybe a little bit of a disturbing movement in international higher education and international doctoral studies. So let's get into this. So as we all know, let's start with the basic stuff. There is a big difference between a Doctor of Philosophy and a Research Masters. Both are incredibly valuable qualifications. I've done both, for example, but a Research Masters synthesizes already existing knowledge and a PhD provides an original contribution to it. But the SOC is a change. The significant original contribution to knowledge is, I would argue, a rather radical reconfiguration of the doctoral project. And I disagree with SOC, by the way, but as always in these vlogs, I'm going to present the argument. Please feel free to disagree with me, you always should, but I'm going to present a series of arguments to you so that you are prepared to think through this pivotal moment and indeed this moment of pivot in doctoral studies. So this vlog today has a very, very simple structure. Significant, original, contribution to knowledge. I'm going to look at each of those four words, but I'm going to do it in an inverted fashion. K-C-O-S. Cos. Not as attractive. And the reason I'm doing the words in that order is because I'm starting with the least controversial term and moving to the one that is actually transforming what we do in doctoral education. So let's start with the least controversial term, the most clear in terms of definition, and that is knowledge. Knowledge is a theoretical or practical understanding of a subject or topic. It's gained through formal or informal means. It suggests that we understand something facts or ideas or particular series of concepts. So more specifically, the study of knowledge in philosophy is described as epistemology. Okay, so knowledge is not simply true or a vibe. Following on from Plato, knowledge is justified true belief justify true belief. And those three words are each, I think, quite significant. Just because we believe something doesn't mean that it's true and doesn't mean that it's justified. And that combination of those three words is what makes knowledge, knowledge. And I think we need to focus a lot more attention on justified because it's not about assumptions. Knowledge is not a feeling. Knowledge is not an assumption, it is a justified belief. What that means for you in a doctoral program is an individual cannot invent knowledge. Knowledge is shared and most importantly, knowledge has an audience. So therefore, knowledge must be disseminated, understood, verified, checked, excellent. Evaluated is the important bit here. It's not simply believed. Knowledge is crucial to scholarly life, obviously, but it's also what makes philosophy, philosophy. So that's knowledge, really straightforward. Our next word, the C word, is contribution. How a PhD makes a contribution to knowledge. 
So contribution is the role that a person plays or an object plays in the development of something. So to contribute to something. That something could be, in our case, the advancement of knowledge. So a contribution to knowledge. It's also in our sphere linked with importance. So to contribute to something is to render it important. How have you intervened in your field or subject or discipline? So a contribution can be a recontextualization of theory or a data set. You can expand an already existing model. You can combine one or two ideas and create something new. And that's where we get to interdisciplinarity, antidisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, multidisciplinarity. Another way to think about contribution, and this is using another ambiguous buzzword of our time, is impact. Impact certainly is ambiguous as well, so it's, it's not helping us terribly much. But if you start to think about the impact of your research, then that might also enable or scaffold you to consider your contribution to knowledge. Okay, that was the C word. Where are we at? Let's do the O word, originality. Okay, a PhD must demonstrate, confirm and verify originality. That is its defining characteristic. Now, you know I make sure all my students, every single one of them, can figure a sentence that they put in their abstract, their introduction and their conclusion at least. And the form of that sentence is, my original contribution to knowledge is. So I make them put that sentence in the abstract, the introduction and the conclusion. I make them do that for a lot of reasons. Firstly, it relaxes the examiner because the examiner's not looking for originality. The student has told them where to find it, like a tour guide or a travel guide through their own PhD. But there's something intellectually quite important in being able to configure that sentence because what scholarship is about is the best doctoral research presents originality in a clear, focused, and succinct way. So if you can put it in a sentence, it's not baggy, it's not, oh, look, this is what it's about, let's try and talk myself into an argument. If you can nail it in a sentence, you're really demonstrating the focused precision with which you're understanding originality. So don't present it in a generalized or a woolly way. You have to be able to pinpoint with clarity your original contribution to knowledge. Originality is confirmed by, it's very easy to confirm, you confirm it by having a strong and expansive grasp of the literature. You verify that through a literature review or a systematic review or a scoping review. So you demonstrate and you show, I have an understanding of knowledge. How can you make an original contribution to knowledge if you don't know the state of knowledge right now? So that's why literature reviews take place. Where is literature at now? And then through research methods that are transparently presented, you take that already existing knowledge system verified by your literature review and move it somewhere else. That's the point of a literature review and, and methods. That's why you're doing it. You're scaffolding from an original knowledge system to originality. So it's all predictable. It's all clear, accountable, transparent, repeatable. We know what's going on here. This is great. Now, the important part, I think, of the originality discussion in the PhD is that it's not simply a matter of outlining your originality. You have to demonstrate it. You have to verify it. How you've reached originality, how you've made your research, yes, meaningful. So an original contribution to knowledge is more than something being novel or unique. It must manifest through the very structure of your PhD. What are you doing for the first time? So you might be generating a new and original technique or observational result. We see that a lot in nanoscience and nanotech. Great. You might have an original idea original method, love original methods, they're tremendous, great original contribution to knowledge. You might be doing an original testing 
of somebody else's idea. So moving that test or that model to a new location, that's also originality. You might be doing empirical work that hasn't been done before, applying an old technique to a new area, I always love those, or applying or finding new evidence that shines a really fantastic light on an old issue or an old trope. So the key challenge here is a PhD mustn't just claim originality, you have to demonstrate it in a substantial way. And there are lots of ways that you can do that, but framing your work within the context of the already existing literature and showing how your methods are moving it to something new, that is the key way. Brilliant. Okay, so we're all in agreement, this is all fine, we all know what's going on. And we're now going to do that final word. Yes, the S word, significant. This is the one that worries me. Because as you can see, through the other words, the O word, the C word, and the K word, original contribution to knowledge, it's verifiable. It is accountable through objective strategies. You can demonstrate originality, you can demonstrate a contribution, and you can demonstrate how you're engaging with knowledge. You can do that in a really clear way, no worries. But the problem with significance is significance is in the eye of the beholder. Students worry, quite rightly, about examiners being arbitrary in their judgments. You know, you think about it, you spend three years of your life, powerful, life is important, time is precious. You spend three years of your life, and then at the end of all that research, two people assess it. Now, you know, and that's, that's an examiner, that could be subjective, that could be a vibe, you know, they could have a whole series of biases that are going on, they could go rogue. And of course, we've all seen it when examiners do go rogue. And that's why in universities, of which Flinders is a great example, we spend a lot of time crafting with care policies and procedures and checklists that we frame and shape the examination experience for supervisors and students, but also examiners. So we try and stop examiners going rogue and doing their own thing. We have normative parameters of what an examination actually is. So original contribution to knowledge is clear. Have you presented the literature? Are there research methods? Are you creating something new? Verifiable, clear. But the word significant is adding a lot of ambiguity and subjectivity, I would argue, to the examination process. And I think that's why it's worrying me a little bit. Because significance is very difficult to prove or to verify. And as I was moving through the SOC literature for this vlog, so I wanted to see how other universities and how the literature is just starting to manage the word significant. And I have found some reasonable stuff. So if you are interested, there are four strategies that are used internationally to help students grasp and prove and hold on to that word significant, okay? So if you want to prove your significance, there are at the moment four ways you can do that. So explain the importance of your research questions, okay? Explain why the research was worth doing. So start with the research questions, show why it was significant in terms of worth doing. Two, the significance of the findings. Why should the examiner care? Why do your findings actually matter? Three, explain how your research transforms theory. Explain how your research transforms theory. And the fourth strategy to verify significance is explain the generalizability or the lack of generalizability from your research. Don't think that generalizability in and of itself is important. If you've shown your research is not generalizable, that's also significant. So the generalizability variable is important. So what we need to do is probably break down significance a little bit more to see, does your research have value? Was the contribution worth making? 
So just to add, you can see my worry, just to add further worry and concern to the word significant, it can also, and is starting to capture, the interests of stakeholders. So is your research making an economic, social, or cultural contribution? Is it significant in that way? And yes, significance is also linking with that very scary word, impact, as well. Therefore, a lot of topics can simply be dismissed as unimportant because they're not working with the policy or political flavour of the day. The more problematic, it even gets worse, the more problematic definitions of significance start to get into scope and scale of the research. Sometimes we're seeing in examination reports, oh look, that research is fine, but it's not of the scope and scale we would expect of a PhD. So that might be scope and scale about data set or reading. Now, significance is not about size. You know, a really, really small discovery can be really, really, really important. But it is significant, I think, and this is what I'm trying to convey through my concern, that the word significant adds a lot of subjectivity to the examination space. All the other letters, original contribution to knowledge, all of those other letters in SOC, can be verified in some form. You can actually demonstrate how you are doing that. But significance is much more difficult to prove. It's much more in the gift and the subjectivity of the examiner. Significance, like importance, comes from a very personal perspective, I think. All of us, every single one of us, consider some topics important, and some topics significant, and others a lot less so. And if I'm really honest with you, I think about the hundreds of PhDs that I've examined, and they've all, yeah, all except one, demonstrated an original contribution to knowledge. And I was thinking about it this morning as I was prepping for this vlog, and I was thinking, were any of those PhDs actually what I would class as significant? And the answer is no. Now that's, again, just me. But that's the point I'm trying to make today. All examiners, like all researchers, have biases, favoured topics, tropes, literature, research methods, and we like to see those used in a particular way. But none of what we feel, what we like, should have any dealings or relationship with examination. We are applying policies and procedures, and we're looking for verification and evidence for an original contribution to knowledge. So therefore, all of us, as students, as supervisors, as examiners, need to perhaps be very careful in this movement from an original contribution to knowledge to a significant original contribution to knowledge. And how would I handle this? So for students that are starting with me in the next few weeks, next few months, so we're just about to start new PhD students, how would I handle this new variable, this significant variable? And what I would do is I would open a Word file right at the start of your candidature. And I would call it a significance file. I would actually call it that. And everything that you think, oh, that might be important. That's really a significant moment in my research. I would take a breath, take a pause, open your significance Word document and write that key paragraph. Why is it significant? What research question have you done? What have you just discovered that makes it meaningful in terms of cultural, social, economic impact? So it could be innovation and method. It could be you found something brand new. It could be an innovation or intervention in the policy parameters of the day. Wow. But just on the way through, what I want you to do is start to create some prose, some paragraphs that focus directly on significance. So thank you to the wonderful Karen for the sock challenge. It was a great one, it's an important one, and always in these vlogs I try to be right at the edge of where knowledge, where policy, where procedure, where theory is going that frames and shapes doctoral studies. And the movement from an original contribution to knowledge to a sock is one of those moments. So thank you, Karen, for the, the suggestion. And as always, I wish you love, 
light and peace. Tea out.